Hey hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you all this thing that I've been working on. Uh, this is a, 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 as we can see here, this is it. This is a nice little Zippo case that's holding, uh, normally it holds pencils, but right now it's holding different things. Uh, so inside of the Zippo case I have two Raspberry Pis, a, a travel router, and a power bank. Uh, actually two power banks powering it all. And it all fits in the case. So the use case of all that is that I can do some travel lab stuff. So this is actually my travel lab. I have a lab at home that this router inside of here connects to that lab. So I can actually do some even cooler stuff. But the main thing is just the focus of this, which this is a nice little travel travel lab uh, that I can power off of the power bank. So inside of here, we see the things that are in here. We have a Raspberry Pi 4 that's right here inside of a nice... Uh, gym case. This is a gym Raspberry Pi Pro case, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is the one that has a cutout for the micro USB down there, or sorry, micro um, micro SD card, so I can swap it off if I need to. I have not need, really needed to at this point. Uh, we have the travel router, which is the GL um, iNet travel router. This is the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the AR750. Yeah, the AR750 router. So I'm able to do some cool stuff with that. One, it doesn't have any antennas. Two, it doesn't really take that much power. Well, it takes a little bit more power than I wish it would, but it's a router, so I guess I can't complain too much. And it has a micro SD card slot, so I can actually use it for some um, some file transfer stuff from the one and two. And there right now I have a 280 or 265 um, gigabyte card. And then over here we have the power bank that I mentioned before. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention it yet. Sorry, we have one power bank. This power bank is connected to the Raspberry Pi 4. The reason for that I'll explain in a second, but this one's connected, uh, being powered by the main power bank and then connected to the Raspberry Pi 4 to be, um, for the power, Raspberry Pi 4 to have power. And then last but not least, we have the main power bank, which is down here, uh, or next last but not least, we have the main power bank, which is down here, uh, currently 20,000 milliamps. Uh, inside of this power bank and it's currently at 90%. It's connected to all the things which includes the travel router, uh, the other power bank, and the actual Raspberry Pi 02W. And then last but not least we have the Raspberry Pi 02W right there. Uh, pretty nice. Um, idealistically I would rather have maybe three or four Raspberry Pi 02Ws running inside of here, but because of the current chip, chip shortage and because I don't have those on hand, unfortunately this is the setup that I have, so I just kind of pieced it together. So to explain why this power bank exists, uh, we actually have to kind of focus on how the Raspberry Pi 4 powers up. So the Raspberry Pi 4, when it's powering up, it does demand uh, quite a bit of power. Um, I don't know the exact numbers on it. I'm not a, quite the expert myself on these, the, on these things. But um, as far as I understand it, or as far as, I guess, actually what actually happens in the field, is that if this Raspberry Pi 4 is connected to the main power bank, and the Raspberry Pi 4 needs to power cycle or it goes down and comes back up, it will cause a surge to everything else to where the Raspberry Pi 02W restarts and the router restarts. And that's especially, I mean, well, one, I don't want things to surge because this sounds not great for technology. And then two, that's especially not good for the router because the router itself takes about a minute or so to actually start up and get running and get going to where things can get access to it. And that causes a few problems with my lab setup especially considering that I'm connected through SSH, or sorry, I'm, I'm SSHing into all these different devices. So the reason why the power bank's there is just to help accommodate that. Idealistically, I'd rather have this connected to the router, but you know, maybe I can mess with that configuration later. But the main thing is that I can actually um, power cycle the Raspberry Pi 4 without surging everything else, which is nice. I can also separately turn off this power bank, uh, this top power bank, uh, so that way I can just keep the Raspberry Pi 4 out of the picture. And speaking of turning things off, uh, while well, I have this whole stack of nonsense over here, speaking of uh, turning things on and off, uh, we have the power bank. So here's another one. I have two of these just because um, I had a different goal in mind when I originally started this, but this is the bill we have because this case is not big enough to fit two of these. But this 20,000 20, milliamp um, hour battery bank is pretty nice because it does have a power button. So I can press that button once to turn it on and I can press it twice to turn it off. Uh, and that's useful for a few different reasons. Uh, reason number one, uh, if I want to have the entire thing turned off, I can. Uh, reason number two is that this power bank can be charged while um, powering everything else. So I can plug this into the wall using the connector here, which we'll talk about those in a second. But I can plug it into the USB type C and it can also power everything else at the same time. Uh, but unfortunately with this current configuration, the amount of power coming in is just enough for it to go out. So it will stay at 89 in this Example, it'll stay, stay at 89% indefinitely, um, even if it's or while it's powered into the wall. Maybe it's charging just slightly, but it's charging so slow that it doesn't even matter. 
So that goes along with to say that being able to turn this power bank off is useful because then I can get a, uh, this power bank to charge without having to unplug everything and swap it, which is very nice because it's a lot of cables to kind of go in and wrangle with. <clears throat> um, and then also uh, being able to turn it off is useful because I can make sure it stays off while I'm traveling around. Um, same thing for this power bank. This power bank can turn off as well. I don't, I don't recall if I mentioned that, but it can. Uh, yeah. And another thing, another cool thing about this power bank, uh, aside from the I/O, which we'll take a moment to gander at, uh, in the I/O we have a micro USB, which I think can be uh, for power in, uh, USB Type C, which is power in or power out, and then a lightning charger. So the one that's used for iPhones or iDevices, you can actually charge this power bank with that cable, and then three USB Type A ports. So of the USB Type-A ports, we have a few different things in, uh, involved in this. And where's the, there we go. We have a few different things involved with the USB Type-A ports. So the USB Type-A ports are pretty nice because the two, the two left ones over here, so these two left ones over here, uh, these I think provide uh, 2.4 amps, uh, 2.4 amps uh, each. And this one over here is a more higher, high powered charging one. And that more high powered charging one can actually pull or can actually give out um, I think according to the documentation, it says 4.5 amps. Um, I'm not sure if that's while well, everything else is plugged in, because my assumption is that will be a little bit less than that, but that's just an assumption. I haven't really tested it out much. So theoretically, I probably could power the Raspberry Pi 4 from the 3 charger and then plug everything else in if I just get the plugs right. Um, I can play with that later, but right now this is the setup I have, and it fits in the box. So that's what we're going with. All right, cool. So... In addition to having the Raspberry Pis connected to the network, um, I do have a few other tricks up the sleeve here. Uh, trick number one is that the Raspberry Pi, um, the Raspberry Pi 4 in here, uh, actually is running RetroPie, so I can actually use it to do emulation on the go. Um, I don't know how it will fare yet if I plug the, a monitor into this and then plug you know some USB peripherals so we can actually power it. I think I actually might struggle with the power given how things are currently connected. Um, but that's a possibility. I can do that. And then also, um, I could also put my 8 gig Raspberry Pi inside of here if I wanted to. Um, but I currently do not have that set in there. So that's another option. But it's not there. And then last but not least, uh, here is my tablet. This is a Galaxy Tab S8 FE, or Fan Edition. And it's connected to the router that's over there. And it's a little bit hard to see that screen there. Let's see if I can get that to be a little bit better. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see the screen, but uh, I can SSH into each individual Pi. So if I'm in the Black Box Pi, which is the one that's running, or the Raspberry Pi 4 over there, you can see it's running RetroPie. And also, if you want to check the temperatures, because uh, it should be good now that I open up the case. Uh, temperature is running at 37 degrees Celsius, so the case is doing its job of keeping it cool. Um, even while the case is closed, I think it gets up maybe to about 41. And it, it, it might, it, of course, it's inside of a, you know, a case with other hot stuff. Like that router does run a little hot that's in there. So I wouldn't keep it closed while running it if I didn't have to. Uh, and I don't really have a situation where I really need to. But at the, the, main, the main thing I'm trying to point out, though, is that it's running. Uh, it's doing different things. I have it running my Docker images. So if I do Docker image LS. So if I look at my Docker, I have my Docker image right there. These are all the Docker images I have. Uh, Docker PS, I think I only have, um, yeah, I only have Portana running right now. And uh, I, I can do a few other things with this. I mean, of course, it's just a Raspberry Pi. So maybe one day I'll do Kubernetes. Maybe one day I'll play around more with Ansible. Um, but the ultimate thing I can do too is I can also SSH into my other Pi. So if I do SSH um, skull Pi, which is the Raspberry Pi 0 2W that's in there at 192.168.23.113 and then for the password excuse me for a second all right there we go so i am ssh into the skull pi so i'm so i'm ssh into the raspberry pi 4 and then i ssh from the raspberry pi 4 over to the raspberry pi 02w and then i can also push it a little further i can ssh because i'm connected to my lab network at home I can actually SSH, uh, so I think it's SSH pi at 192.168.8.2, nope, uh, 239. Yes, so I can also SSH into my other pi, which let me see if I get the password to. Uh, nope. Okay, I think I think I know it's wrong. Um, I think I have the wrong username, but what I'm just trying to show is that I can, I can like 
do all the things I want to do with the lab, um, kind of play around with all that, and have fun with that. So let's try this again. Here we go. All right, cool. So I'm SSH into one Pi, while well, SSH into another Pi, while well, SSH into another Pi. <laughs> it's like an SSH-ception. Um, but the main thing I'm trying to point out is that, you know, this is my, my other Raspberry Pi that's running my Raspberry Pi hole. It's a Raspberry Pi 0W, zero or zero w, uh, which we can see up there, device model, Raspberry Pi 0W. Um, so I'm SSH-ception. So if I just exit out of this, uh, then I'm back into, well, if I exit out of that, I'm back into my my Skull Pi, which is the Raspberry Pi 02W. If I exit out of that, I'm back into the Black Box Pi. And if I exit out of that, then I'm back into the actual main window. Uh, just kind of showing demonstration things I can do. But for the most part, this is mostly going to be used for me doing lab things, playing around with my lab, um, learning more about Linux, the Linux environment, learning more about Raspberry Pis, and maybe one day I'll do some stuff with my um, Raspberry Pi Picos that I have just lying around, because I have a few of those. I can't find it. It's so small. Um, yeah, I have a few of those lying around that I don't really do much with, but maybe one day I'll play around with those. And man, just trying to find my Raspberry Pi Pico, but I can't find it. All right, we'll just assume it exists somewhere. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for the video, though. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer what questions I can, though I cannot promise that I'll be able to answer every question because I am basically just getting my sea legs when it comes to fully playing around with all the tech stuff. And there's my... Raspberry Pi Pico, just to prove that I do have one. Uh, Pico W, sorry. Uh, but we'll see what cool things I can do with that. Maybe run like a mini web server and play around with it. But uh, that's for future stuff. So hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.